welcome to the Super Idols RPG Arc 1 Q&A. Yay! Yay! <laughs> the gang's all oh, here. Yeah. It's every Everybody's feeling good, and it's definitely not 2.30 a.m. for some of them. <laughs> yeah, it's actually 2.50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 10 minutes to 4 a.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, Luca, it's 4 a.m. for you? Well, it will be in 10 minutes. Oh, oh my no. god. It's, uh, how are you? First, let's start off this this more behind the scenes oriented recording with a salute to our European players. Um, thank <laughs> hey. you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> you, thank you, you for can't your service. hear it, but I am saluting my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can hear it. I can hear the salute. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Good, as long as you can hear it. <laughs> it, is, it is an audio medium, so mm-hmm. it's important. You know, but we're, we're <laughs> what was it? Specify. Abstract audio. Unless you want me to put a generic <laughs> whooshing sound effect, which I don't think I will. <laughs> Aaron, you you do so much. You do not need to. Uh, yeah. You do not need to produce yeah. sound effects for the Q and A. I promise. No, I, yeah. I take this as a, as a, a break type thing for sure. <laughs> Even though it's coming out in between regular episode releases, so it's not really a break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, really quick though, can we start off this Q and A, this little behind the scenes moment with like? Shouting Aaron out for like all the incredible work that she does. Yes, yes, like, yes. So yes. Good. she's amazing. Yeah, oh amazing. my god, incredible. Oh, and our number you. one advocate, not just for us, but for our really awesome podcast network. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we're a part of. Yeah, she yeah. does a lot of work for those folks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll definitely have a, a few questions from some from some people both uh, on the network and who frequent that network's Discord. Ooh. Mm, okay. Nice. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, go listen to all the wonderful shows on the Big Gay Girl Dice Network. Um, <laughs> just generally. Or just be gay and roll dice. Yeah, That's also cool just too. do that. Yeah, oh, hell it's a really good yeah. thing to do. I'm a big fan of yeah. Yeah. Kind of that, yeah. Both, honestly. Yes. I think <laughs> we all are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the one um, thing I added in right here is like the, <laughs> the, the network stinger right here. <laughs> be gay. Roll Dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. There we go. The sound of gay dice being rolled as well. It has to be yes. gay. You have to be able to yeah. hear yeah. gay. Yes. I want yeah. the sound to tell. recording <laughs> listeners. Enjoy it. And it's, and it's gay dice. <laughs> Ten hours to produce the perfect gay dice rolling sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Layering, like, Rolling with like matte sounds, with sparkly sounds, with <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, yeah, the gentle used... ethereal <laughs> wind in the background. Hell yeah. yeah, and we actually rolled like seven different se- sets of dice, mm-hmm. yeah. all in you know all of the colors. Well, actually, there's more. There's more colors now on the flag. Um, there are so yeah. a lot of the new the new flag around this year, so that's been really good. Yes. Even uh, the company yeah. I work for adopted it as nice. the, the main flag too. So oh, that's it's nice. really the corporations it. have uh, signed on to the oh, new that's flag. How you know it's so, working? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, Aaron, what are we doing today? We are doing a a, a Q and A, which is a short for a question and answer. Um, so mm-hmm. we oh, we're gonna yeah. be um asking questions and giving uh, answers. Uh, it, it's a very complex process, you can tell. Yeah, right. well, that's that's mm-hmm. our first question answered. We're we're doing great. This is yeah, great. we're already winning. Yeah, yeah. I um, think we're picking up on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's anyway, fine. Yeah. we're just we're just a little bit loopy here on Super Idols tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. we're not recording at our usual <laughs> time. Some of us are recording it in, uh, at incredibly late hours. Um, incredibly some of us are recovering late. from from surgery. Um, it's great. Everybody's yeah. fine. Some of us are like hundred yeah. percent fine. <laughs> some of us are just tired because it's Friday. Yeah, it's also mm. Friday. Yeah. So that's me. Which is so who when, are honestly, all these? <laughs> yeah, no, it's honestly good that we're recording this kind of session where we don't have to be structured or on or anything. <laughs> we just have to ask each other questions. I, yeah. I just love that Liv keeps trying to put us <laughs> back on. Yeah. Yeah. We're all like, sorry. let's talk about so something else. They're they're trying <laughs> so hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fuck you. Yeah. 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 Listen. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know how fucked up the situation has to be where I'm the one putting you on rail? <laughs> you know it just occurs to me. 
happy too that this is the first time that uh, <laughs> that listeners are going to be hearing uh, Liv interacting with the cast. Oh, oh that's yeah. true. Oh, oh, wait. Wait. Okay. Can we open up real fast and immediately say that Liv and I don't hate each other? Yes. Um, we're good friends. <laughs> And you that's why we roast each other. Good friends. We're very good friends, so it's fine. Um, we're going to roast each other. That's how we show. Yes, our love. The, re- the rest of yeah. us have gotten used yeah. to it already. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little it's a little abrasive um, when you are put into a situation where we're, we're together because it's like, damn, they really don't like each other. But like, Jack and I talk like every day. We're besties. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it only it is, works frankly, because we're friends. It is frankly adorable. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> well, I guess maybe because this is the the first that the the listeners are hearing from from Liv specifically, maybe we should start with the Lucia question on the list. Oh, okay. <laughs> unless yeah. unless that's too on the spot for you, I won't. If you if that, no, if it is. I don't mind at all. <laughs> okay. Um, Because we have a couple of character-specific questions, um, and Mm -hmm. we did get one specifically for Lucy. I was very happy to get after the absolutely wonderful reception that we got to episode 20. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> oh thank you everybody. Oh my gosh. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. We've been so happy so that... long. Uh, yeah. I was on cloud yeah. nine all day. Like, oh my gosh, my heart. <laughs> I was so oh my gosh, I can't even explain I, how I happy I was. I told everyone that they would love Lucia and I was I, I am Nostradamus incarnate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm <laughs> so what glad about. that everyone else is aware of how adorable and wonderful Lucia is as we yes. have been for a while. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's so great that um our lovely listeners finally got to meet her because I know even just keeping the lid on it and all of the group chats and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that yeah. that we're in where we're I like felt, I felt guilty uh, to be able to be blessed with such an opportunity I was like I can't, we can't keep it to ourselves right exactly I felt exactly. guilty for keeping it to ourselves so I'm oh glad everyone else gets to experience it I know. <laughs> she's a gremlin they're all lying I, oh, I specifically was yes, like so. I feel like we should take a break after season one but like no there's too much good stuff to get to uh, especially we need to get to Lucia. <laughs> mm-hmm. It yeah. was like, so, no, I'll say it. Um, there's actually, <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know, uh, Drac and I do a lot of like streaming TTRPGs and I can't keep a secret. So I told like a couple of like my good friends who I've been like streaming with for like over a year or so, like, Hey, Y'all remember Super Idols? I'm doing it now. And they were like, oh, we're super excited. And I think it was like back in February of 2021, <laughs> we we were doing um, a Monster Hearts game. And at the very end, we're like saying goodbye. We're doing our sign offs. And the host of the show was like, yeah, and like future Super Idol star. <laughs> no, we like, no. No. Spoiled it. And I was like, oh, mm. Oh, we, ooh, we haven't announced it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It wasn't like it was, a super no. top secret. Nobody has, nobody can know type secret. No. But it was just like it was so funny in the yeah. moment. It was very, very funny. Yeah, it was more in the sense of like this character won't debut for like five months, so it's hard to hype them up right right now. <laughs> five months. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Yeah. Literally. Um, but anyway, it all um, out. I will ask yes. the, the I will actually ask a question on this list of questions. Um, oh, so I will name. ask uh, from Waffle Frog, uh, who did actually ask this via the BGRD Discord, and actually asks it directly to Lucia. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Lucia, okay, put on a voice. Mm-hmm. Do you think your dad would let you perform if he had seen Violence Violet get shot after being detransformed after the battle? Um. You know, sometimes the less your parents know, the better it goes. Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell my dad that Violence Violent got shot? No. <laughs> Does he know? No. Would he absolutely shut down any hopes and dreams I have of being a super idol if he knew? Absolutely. So you're not going to tell him, we're not going to say a single word, and that's the end of the story. The, the secret between me and my uh, tens of hundreds of listeners. Yes, 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 yes. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, no, it would have been a shutdown entirely. I mean, Aaron, you could weigh in on this, but uh, yeah, actually, more, th- this is more like more um, it's highlighting a, uh, like a, a mistake that we made because like the way mm-hmm. that that battle played out, um, they, they, they probably should have seen that because that happened in pretty close proximity to the the barrier yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't remember the exact order of events when we recorded. Um, and in fact, um. Patreon listeners, if you've heard the uncut version of that episode, you'll hear me say like, oh no, I don't remember what caused the barrier to surge. Um, I'll yes. just record something in post. I think post. it was me, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it was you. because of my, my golem thing that I summoned. Yeah, I but think it was, like... was you, but we couldn't remember what move exactly that it, it was. It was when the golem was threw out the yeah. Yeah. Line. yeah, it was your golem yeah. going off the stage. <laughs> yeah, and slammed into the barrier. There was also just so much going on, and I think that's like much more accurate because like at least when i was listening to the like raw edit of just the recording there was like so much going on and it was so easy to get wrapped up in like all of this and all of that Mm -hmm. but like we do highlight in lucia's episode the fact that like they are far apart like lucia's dad was like no, we are in the nosebleed sections, beloved. Like, you do not get to go up to that yeah. stage. So I think, canonically, um, we can probably say that sometime during that shuffle, maybe Lucia's dad, like, went to the bathroom or something. Yeah, <laughs> or at the very that. least, at the, or at the very least had this moment of, like, like chill and, like, one-to-one facing. And in that moment, you know, I just, I think, like, it was an awesome show, but I think at the high points of it, it was very chaotic and hard mm-hmm, to keep mm-hmm. track of what was happening. Mm-hmm, for sure. Because a barrier broke. That's not supposed to happen. That's very scary. Yeah, like, maybe just his mind was reeling from the barrier thing alone, and the other things mm-hmm. happened so quickly after it didn't mm-hmm. even register. He was he was just looking for the emergency exits and wasn't looking at the stage. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Canon explanation. Yeah. Boom. And yeah. There we go. And to once again highlight Aaron's um, production skills, because that spoiler alert, you thought this was a Q and A. It's a pre- Aaron appreciation <laughs> hour. We're all here to say how much we appreciate Aaron and the work Get that he does to make the show what it is. <laughs> yeah, we exactly. tricked Aaron into scheduling her own um, appreciation hour. No. Yeah, this is the opposite <laughs> of a right. roast. Happy um, anniversary, super idols! We yay! love you, Aaron. Ooh, yay! Thanks. That's true. <laughs> um, but I remember like being in that like this recording session with Aaron and it was so easy for like me to be Lucia and be like it's not a big deal it's fine it's whatever who cares but then when I was like re-listening to the edit I was like and maybe it's because I wasn't in trying to put myself in the head space of a child um but as I was like re-listening to the final cut I was like no sis you should be freaking out. Like, your dad is so valid. It's scary. I don't yeah. know. Even like um, when it was happening, um, this is probably spoilers too for the um, for the end of arc one. But um, that part where Diana shoots at Vivi mm-hmm. after she's been detransformed, like my heart stopped for a second. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. It's just one of those things where you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And even in the moment, I thought it was a mean thing to do, but like th- narratively speaking, like, and the way that I've written Diana's character, like she would not have been able to let that go that easily. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. that mm-hmm. perfect. <laughs> That's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm always up for terrible, terrible things to happen to my characters. <laughs> it's the, it, it's the mean, reason why we play teach RPGs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also, like, because of the way that Masks is structured, like, we can get into the nitty gritty. We can get, mm-hmm. like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. down in the mud with it, but, you know. I, I definitely think that it's, when you're a teenager and you have an idea of, like, this is fine, I, everything will be fine, I'm I am invincible. Mm-hmm. I can do whatever and my parents will just worry. So I'll just not tell them about it. like it's it's really easy to just yeah. convince yourself that it's fine. <laughs> like the fact that the kids haven't told really anybody at this point in the story about like the whole Crimson Signal thing much yet mm-hmm. either. Like the closest mm-hmm. thing they've told to adults about it is Vapor Wave. Mhm. Yeah. Like they think, well, clearly we have to handle this us the 15 mm-hmm. and 16 year olds. Well, yes, this is it's not regular crime, it's idle crime. 
we can't trust adults. We've made that exactly. Mm-hmm. That's the important lesson. We're trying to show Jaden you can't trust any adults. The laws of men do not apply to super idols. <laughs> that that ended immediately. Like <laughs> Jaden was like, "Yes, I'm never going to trust any adult." I... And next episode, he told an adult everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> immediately. That, yeah. that does, that does remind me. I would like to. I would like to reassure everyone that. Um, with Lu- Lucia joining the podcast, joining the team shortly, uh, don't worry. We will we will keep our promise of all mean girls and one very sweet boy. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You all, because I feel like we don't actually see how mean Lucia is <laughs> in her prologue. The meanest that we get is the like her terrorizing Tony. Oh yeah! Give don't you time. don't you we'll don't you worry, out. listeners. If you're entertained by how uh, Liv is bouncing off the cast out of character right now, you're really going to enjoy episode twenty one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! So questions? Yes. Questions. Um, I just asked a character question. I have I have my questions split up into a couple sections. So I think I'm going to go just to the general question for the next one. Mm-hmm. I think I'll just start at the top of that one. Might as well, because it's it starts with a good question. Um, uh, our, our good friend of the show, uh, Crumpet, uh, also uh hangs around the BGRD Discord a lot. Um, asks for every PC and Karen, what real life artist album or song would you say most closely matches your character's style of music? Oh, not to be this person, I do have an answer. If everybody else needs to think, oh, absolutely, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So. For me, and oh, I'm going to have to put a lot of caveats into this. Spoiler alert, I really love music. Um, <laughs> for me, it's the song um, Love Language by Ariana Grande. Um, it's from her most recent album, which has like positions and POV on it. But um, all good magical girl or magical pal transformations have to have an intro song. And the like hip hop beats with the like highly escalating violin notes that lead into that song just like scream this like very lucia energy to it like t- or at least to me and the song itself has like a lot of like r&b singing like a little bit of rapping i like ariana grande's music with some caveats um she's not a rapper <laughs> She's just <Yeah>. not. <laughs> but, like, the combination of, like, R&B singing and rapping is, like, where I've always seen Lucia. Mm-hmm. But if I had to, a tr- like, point to a particular rapper and be like, ah, yes, this is, like, where I think she gets her sound, it would be Flo Millie, who iconically did the Beef remix um, which starts with like, I like my cash and my hair to my ass. Like, she's the queen of the like fan cams. She's got this like very girly, high pitched voice and she raps this very like, I am who I am. Like, who's going to question it? Who's going to doubt it? She's super funny. Um, very quick witted. And like, that is very much those like two artists are very much like Lucia to me. But yeah. I didn't Very think cool. about this a lot at all. <laughs> this is good notes for me looking for a transformation theme for Lucia. Although maybe you can oh. probably help me with that more, <laughs> better than what I can. Um, I mean, yeah, no, I was listening to the artist that she used um, for her prologue episode. And like, even though I don't think we've ever officially talked about it, you got it. Like you 100% got it. So don't you worry. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> That whole episode felt like it was a very, like, slice of life, chill episode up until, like, the last part of it. So I wanted it to have that very chill, like, chill hop vibe to it. You really did. It was great. So oh, good. good. <laughs> Ooh, I have an idea. And this is not a cop-out. I very much thought about this and with my characters, my um, with Jaden's character as well. Jaden is a really a pushover. Um <laughs> If you tell him something with enough confidence, he'll believe you. Uh, so, uh, so I think because of that, I don't think he has a style. If you, I think he's flexible, maybe even to a fault, um, mm. where he he just doesn't really have a place or doesn't really know where his place is. Um, so, he's the kind of guy. If you look through his playlist, he has a bit of everything in his um in his like playlist, um, and has no particular favorites. Whether that changes th- as the seasons go by and he becomes more like, I don't know, like self-confident, who knows? But I think right now he's, he, he doesn't know who he is right now. Um, so he doesn't know what his style is right now either. He's just kind of going with the flow of everyone else. 
I like that, especially in combination with Jaden's power set being as like diverse mm-hmm. as it is too, with like the yeah. different like polar opposite extremes that they can go yeah. to, and like the fact that like he's turning into the team's composer and specifically created this like fusion style for rhythmics. That's why the group yeah. is rhythmics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <gasps> Wait, I thought of something recently, and I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Um, are Rhythmics fans called Mixers? <laughs> I hope so. I now they are. <laughs> yep. Now they are. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's they canon. Are. They Let's go. remember that for the t-shirts later. Yep. <laughs> I gotta remember to use that like uh, that X hand motion again more often. I only used it the once. <laughs> I should have used it during oh, the finale. Yeah, okay. it'll uh, branding. Mm-hmm. It'll catch on. Yeah, yeah. So. I have a couple of musical influences I used when describing Vivi's sound, but um, also I don't know anything about music or styles at all, so I don't know if there's anything that would be closer to how I've I've described her singing during the show, but most of those references are are anime characters, so fortunately uh, I can narrow it down very quickly because they're not real-life artists. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh but um baby metal is a Ooh, yeah. Yeah. metal band that a hundred percent i've used as a reference for i i imagine vv singing like very aggressively and energetically whatever she's singing and the the best known song of baby metal is gimme chocolate and it's yeah. like <laughs> if if you want to see uh three young girls stand on a stage and convince you that uh, you're you're gonna fucking die if you don't give them chocolate. Then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the famous words of like, what is it? Ro- it was like Rob Zombie or somebody of that caliber. Oh yeah, who, like Rob Zombie. said of baby yeah. metal that they they ro- they roll harder than you. <laughs> what random yeah, person someone, who makes yeah. fun of them? Yeah, someone tried chatting shit about him, and yeah. they were like, "Yeah, no, they they probably harder than you, mate." I think I think he said like they have more energy than ninety percent of the bands he toured yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's I think that's a pretty good analog because mm-hmm. you know Vivi w- when she's not uh, you know working with the group gravitates towards really like aggressive harsh metal songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's always fun to find that um, <laughs> what's available in the world of royalty free metal whenever we yes. <laughs> Put music in the show. I know there's <laughs> the, I know the the range of royalty free um, gothic piano symphonic metal is is so wide. I've given you such an it's array. Dreaming. Yeah, to which is from. That, God bless Paratune for making the one song that fit that aesthetic that I was <laughs> yes. looking for. It's very. I'm glad been, you found it. Been accurately described as uh, as a Castlevania like, which I think is probably mm-hmm. a good analog Ooh. too. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, I'll go next. Um, I based Angie on two specific, I guess, I'm going to say things. Uh, the first one was the character on Takamaki from Persona 5. Mm-hmm. I know that's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. And the K-pop solo artist, uh, Chung Ha. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, I was really inspired by the dance practice for um, Stay Tonight which I do recommend every single person watches it because she's so she's so talented in general. It, I think it takes a lot to command the stage by yourself, even among like a series of dancers. And uh, she does it well. And she was like, same thing. She was classically trained. And um, yeah, she trained for six or seven years in dance before she debuted as an idol on a reality show. And uh, also, she's the best. So go stream all her music because <laughs> she's so talented and amazing. Mm. So, um, but yeah, for musical style, I was inspired by her and like the way she dances and pop music and stuff because you could tell she's very classically trained and like the work she does with her hands and everything. Like, there's like no part of her body is ignored in how she performs. Mm-hmm. Speaking of K-pop, I would be remiss to not mention the fact that um, I definitely made Lucia while I was on a big itsy kick. So <laughs> yeah. you're not alone, T. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to have to consult the both of you sometime because I still know embarrassingly little about K-pop for someone who makes a show about idols. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a PowerPoint. We'll get you in. We will. <laughs> yeah. We will guide you through. <laughs> we got this. I'm I'm full in on the like Love Live, um, J Idol side of it. <laughs> Nothing on the K-pop side. There's um there's a lot of similarities in mm-hmm. business practices mm-hmm. between the two industries. So it's mm-hmm. like the stuff that's better, already been worse. mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Um, the stuff that's already kind of been mentioned in the show it, it's the kind of thing where it's like corporations would do it if they could get away with mm-hmm. it so yeah. oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. essentially capitalism yeah <laughs> oh, unfortunately capitalism it transcends culture you know mm-hmm. yeah. it's, <laughs> it's capitalism the universal language and one that we want to get lost as soon as possible uh, <laughs> let it just be the next latin just please <laughs> Like literally, like legitimately, uh, I feel like Super Idols for for me is a a great chance to explore the inherent like contradictions of enjoying something like idols and idol culture. In that they they bring a lot of joy mm-hmm. to a lot of people, both the people who listen to them and the people who perform in that industry. But there's also like all this terrible exploitation that goes on, um, mm-hmm. and it's hard to reconcile the two at times. And mm-hmm. I wanted to get that across. I'm mm-hmm. not as familiar with um, the J-Idol industry, but in the K-pop idol industry, actually, it has been fans on the forefront of advocating for change for mm-hmm. artist rights in South yeah. Korea. Yeah. And I think that's something that like a lot of people, you know, will read the classic headlines, the dark side of K-pop and stuff like that. And they'll be like, that's all there is. Mm-hmm. But it's actually significantly changed in the last oh yeah, 15 years or so. Yeah. A lot of it coming from fan advocacy, usually like around that's a cool. specific idol that they're a fan of that's being exploited, but mm-hmm. it does like the the ripple effects happen. Mm-hmm. So not get too deep into it, but it's like uh, it is to date this just a little bit. It is <laughs> July 9th. Very free Britney. Very free yes. Britney of mm-hmm. it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is like. This is a bit of a tangent, but uh, <laughs> speaking of Free Britney, the site runner of Breathe Heavy has been advocating for this since he was a teenager. Mm. So that's just oh. something to segue into my point that a lot of people act like teenagers, especially teen girls who are the primary target demographic for a lot of Mm -hmm. different idol industries. They act like they kind of just look at the glitz and the glam and they're not thinking critically about the industries that they're supporting. And that's just simply not true. Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that we, I guess we convey that in the show as well, that teenagers are a lot more well-informed than Mm -hmm. people give Mm -hmm. them credit for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, like we joked earlier about like the fifteen and sixteen year olds <laughs> doing this, like all this important, dangerous stuff. But like, yeah. if they're the only ones who are paying attention to it, they're gonna get the shit done. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, um, Luca, I think. Yeah, Lu- Luca hasn't gone yet. <laughs> hmm. Because, uh, like, if I had to put the whole thing in one song, I would go like uh, every time we touch by Cascada. Period. Uh, Periodical. Yeah. Let's Love go. It. Wow, why are we getting yeah. chemistry? <laughs> Let's get I, that, uh, are you telling me that that song doesn't make you feel like, I don't know, some kind of chemical reaction is happening inside yeah, of like you? like you can run up walls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that song makes you feel like I'm going Super Saiyan. That song's yeah, so it's got, good. It's got energy. It's yeah, got drive. It's got melodrama. Very chemical. <laughs> I'm not sure I know the song, but now I want to hear it. <laughs> Oh, Aaron, you absolutely know the song. What? You know the you song. You probably to. don't know the title. You know the song when you hear it. You, you know, know the, the song. song. Because every time we touch, I get this feeling. <laughs> and every time we kiss, I swear oh, I could that, fly. it is that every time we touch. Yeah. I think I just didn't recognize the artist's name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> We'd stop everything so that Aaron can listen to the yeah. song. I would Liv was stop about the to podcast. Be like, remember, Liv was about to be like, you know when I said this was an uh, Appreciate Erin um, recording? Psych, we're roasting the shit out of Erin right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how quickly the, t- the turns have tabled. <laughs> Ta- Turntables, man. Turntables. Um, I've, been, I've been quietly opening, uh, opening a tab and Googling all of the, the artists that <laughs> other people have been citing so that I can <laughs> know who they are. And it's much I like have a little BB sticky note. <laughs> I have a little sticky note that I've been just adding more artists to. <laughs> yeah. I will happily talk to you all about the the glorious oh, yes, female rappers. Yeah. Let's go. Please. 
Yeah, I think uh, I remember early on in the planning, Luca. I think you also mentioned you. You also mentioned Marina and the diamonds at one point, right? <gasps> oh yes, like oh uh, God, if yeah. it's uh, mm-hmm. like if it's songs that Alan would listen to. Yes, honestly, mm-hmm. a lot of early Marina and the diamonds, uh, and uh, and a good amount of like classic rock, uh, Patti Smith, uh, and a lot of uh, musical. Oh, yes, mm. yes. And I think yeah. we won't spoil it for, for right now, but uh, coming into to Arc 2 and beyond, um, there, there'll be a little bit more on that front going forward, I think. Mm. 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 I actually, I have an idea. I have, I have one for Jaden. It's still very much like every genre, but it's a, it's a kid's bot version of everything. <laughs> uh, just oh, of every bless. song, he, he just <laughs> listens to the kid's bot version of it. Oh, bless. Stop it. Oh my God. Yeah, when I, when I was, pick, when I was picking so music accurate. for Jaden's transformation stuff, I specifically went for like a very kind of like, I feel like late 90s, early 2000s top 10 pop kind of yes. feel because yeah. that felt like the yeah. right energy and also the right level of like star that I felt like that you were projecting from what you described to me. Yeah. I mean, not to be redundant, but the Britney Spears of it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, especially mm-hmm. because like she transcends a lot of genres. She does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She does. Okay, back to the questions. Yes. I don't think yes. we're going to get through all the questions on this list today, uh, but I will try to make sure we ask at least one from every person on the list. How about Karen? What? What? Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't say Karen. Be. Yeah, <laughs> she's a, a fair again a very wide music appreciator. Um, she appreciates um, idols and musicians of all stripes, but I think she does have a great appreciation for the classics. Um, and I think I I've said in a future episode this will come up. Um, uh, but. She has a, a particular fondness for the Beatles, actually. Um, oh, yeah, you did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I she, definitely can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think in her mind, they, they embody a lot about, like, because they were one of, like, the first mega pop groups ever, they, like, set a lot of the trends of how, like, the industry works, both for good and for ill. And, like, in that sense, she kind of accepts them for all of the good and the ill that come with them. And also yeah. their discography just slaps. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and also another great example of teenage girls knowing what's going to be good, knowing what's mm-hmm, going to last, mm-hmm, and nobody mm-hmm. listening to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, All right. I brought that question to an end. So um, let, let me go to the, the next one in the general section, because I also like this question, and I'm also curious about it. Um, so Whammy uh, from uh, our uh, My Aaron Cerise Magical Stage Discord asks, um, what drew you to the particular playbook that you ended up playing? Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. I know my reason. Um, one, uh, most of everything else was taken. Um, I was a late addition. I was, a, I was <laughs> one of the late additions to the group. Um, but two, I based Jaden, and someone pointed it out, I think. I remember seeing in the comments, someone pointed it out in the first few episodes when I um, Jaden showed up. I heavily based him on Deku. Um, from my academia, my hero academia or Izuku, and I like the idea of like someone who is just has a ridiculous amount of power, but is way too optimistic about everything. There is the super idols industry, about the chances of him even becoming a super idol. Uh, he wants to make friends with everyone. He wants to do good by everyone, and I like the idea of an incredible amount of power being in such naive hands. Mm-hmm. Um, I just really enjoy that. Because then there's a lot of room for growth. Um, and you know, I'm a teacher RPG player, so there's also a lot of room for trauma from my character. Um, <laughs> and you know, that's the only reason why I play, okay? I want to traumatize my characters, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just found out I found that really interesting. Also, I was um, I was re watching Avatar The Last Airbender around that time, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna play Ang, uh, I'm just gonna get Ang, mush him into a, a body, the body of Izuku, and that's gonna be my character. <laughs> well, I'm all for it. <laughs> Yeah. Love it so far. <laughs> yeah, and we've definitely received, like, from, like, more on the, like, specific masks side of things, we have received, like, some great comments from people who are specifically, like, yeah, no, Jaden's a really interesting example of a Nova because, like, you, you play with the, like, typical story of the Nova in a really interesting way. Like, mm-hmm. normally that character is more focused on, like, the, oh, can I control my powers? What do I do with this with all this power? And so far, <laughs> Jaden has been... Much more about like, I like you said earlier, finding himself at like yeah, wh- what makes him stand out. I think for me, I just wanted a ballet dancer who could punch things. <laughs> that was really a love that vibe. Sometimes it's that simple. Love that. Yeah. For you. 
So the first thing I decided was I wanted to play an explicitly trans character on the podcast. And so uh, looking through the playbooks, uh, aside from the the Doomed just being one of my favorite Masks playbooks, and so gravitating towards that, uh, I also knew that um, when I was a teenager, I would have sold my soul to uh, be a magical girl. And so that the Doomed seemed like a, a natural fit. Mm-hmm. I think I did I did originally envision that being more of a direct having Valerie's transition tied to her magical powers uh somehow or her doom being uh related to that but it it didn't like that for various reasons about you know subtext about I don't know, it's there's there's just a lot mm-hmm. of a, a lot of pitfalls with how trans characters are portrayed in sort of supernatural ways yeah. that I wanted mm. to avoid. Uh, but I, I talked to some friends about it at the time, including a uh, fellow podcaster, Alice Kira, and some other friends about it. And I was happy to get to the idea of Valerie's Doom being about being exploited by the idol industry and the sort of transition aspect of that being that it gives her money and resources that sort of make that easier in a capitalist society where everything costs money mm. so yeah i'm really really happy with how we came around to that but it yeah, the sure. choosing the doomed was partly because i just like that playbook and partly because like i said i i would absolutely have sold my soul to turn into a magical girl when i was a teenager so you know what what if i had the opportunity to i prob sure that was the character idea i had at first yeah. Speaking of like specific reactions that people have had to like the playbooks that y'all have, we've definitely heard from people who are like especially interested in the way that you play Valerie's Doom and how di- that how that differs from a regular Doomed in masks as written. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. To the point where uh, the, I think oh, what was the name of it? It was the superlatives. Uh, you won, I think, yes. one of the, the yeah. major yeah. like superlatives for the Doomed category for that reason. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, most creative use of a Doom track? I believe that was it, yes. That's why I, I do uh, on occasion refer to myself as the award-winning podcaster, Dane Alexa. <laughs> deserved. I'll, I'll, Absolutely deserved. Yeah. Well deserved. I, I, mean, it's I accurate, certainly so. think so. Well, I picked the Genos because I, I really like secret identities. I like Spider-Man was my gateway into superheroes, and uh, I really like the idea of a character who is themselves in a way playing a character like the posturing the trying to be the coolest person you can imagine which Mm -hmm. and that's the problem because it's what you can imagine and also the way the mask is a freedom but it's not just from the like the gravity well of other people's expectations or how what they see in you but it's also a freedom from the self because you are not you you you're a different person and uh, while you may think, for example, of a really cutting retort, you don't feel like saying it out loud because there's really no need to be confrontational. But Queen Bee, she mm-hmm. would do it for no reason, just because, just to assert her power. And also, part of it is the fact that I wish uh, I had had the chance to experiment a little more with my gender presentation when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I really am excited for more of what you're what you're doing on that front for sure. Um, I do I do want to like congratulate you especially for the invention of the phrase "What would Queen Bee do?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I really want to see that on like a bracelet or something at some point. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> like the WWQBD. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> um, I think it's me. Um, I just wanted to be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what about your playbook? Oh, uh, oh, right, my playbook. Oh. Yes, yes, I love it. <laughs> just pass, uh, the, just pass so the roast the, around the table, so everybody. The, there you go. So what, Everything what, get a serving. Oh. What Luca said a moment ago about sometimes you you think of the the perfect thing to say, but you don't say that because you're not that person. Sometimes you just. You can't, can't, sometimes no, you just can't resist. You got it. I yeah. love, I love a good zing. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, I remember like specifically going to Aaron and being like, "Y'all don't really have a troublemaker 
do you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, no, not really. And so it was either going to be the delinquent or the scion, mm. um, which really would have been interesting. But um, I'm super glad I went with delinquent because I feel like it's a little bit lighter. Like there's still like a lot of it's more versatile. Yeah, more versatile. Yes, 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 yes. If I had gone with a scion, I feel like I would have been kind of shoehorned into a very specific angle. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I get to mm-hmm. play a bit more with Lucia. Um, it it also came down to kind of like powers and abilities. And I was like, okay, I think like the idea of, um, spoiler alert, everybody, the idea of like illusions, the idea of being able to bend and manipulate luck makes more sense for somebody who's trying to get away with pranks mm-hmm. than almost any other book. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I also liked the idea of playing a delinquent as a trickster and not like a hashtag bad kid, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. that. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. She's, she's never been to juvie, but she's definitely been grounded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I mean, we love her her mischievous little heart. <laughs> <laughs> She's. It's very funny because I'm an only child, and I never played pranks as a child. So <laughs> I'm just letting it all out here. Ooh, best thing, best thing to do is to prank your little little sisters. I did it all the time. <laughs> it was great. Um, they couldn't touch me. I always saw their pranks coming because I taught them, you know? <laughs> I feel like you're just a menace of an older sibling. I'm, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also like, I'm like, only I can bully my sisters kind of deal, you know? Yeah. Like, if yeah, people, yeah. if anyone bullies my sisters, they come to me and I will, I'm not going to commit my, I'm not going to uh, admit my crimes on the internet, but you know, I will deal with it, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like a good big brother. Exactly. Then after yeah. dealing with their bullies, I'll give them a wedgie. You know, I'll give my sister a wedgie. <laughs> then it's, you know, universe is balanced again. Karma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's our well, next question? question? Let's see. Um, I guess it makes sense. We've done one qu- character question and uh, a couple of general. Maybe I should ask one. Maybe you guys should ask me one of the GM questions. Yay. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. Maybe we should. Ooh, I'll, um, I'll leave that to, to y'all to pick one of those. Well, I know I know which one I want to know the answer to. Oh. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead, yeah. So, Aaron, how's Amberly's idol career after I'm high school so going? I'm glad because you yeah. have the same main I was thinking like... that. As a, I was wondering that as well. Yeah. I yeah. saw that on the list and I wanted to know. Desperately. Yeah, so that, that question comes to us from, from Eric from Otherware, by the way. Friend of the show, hi. Oh, yes, um, sir. And yeah. <laughs> long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. Hello, friend. <laughs> L- Hi, long Eric. time listener, uh, one time voice actor. <laughs> yeah. Eric just does it all, the talent, you know? Anyway, uh, how's Amberly's idol career? I hinted at this a little bit in uh, episode 13, uh, but. At- now that she's in uh, university or whatever, no, she's more in like a, like an art college or something like that. I envision her as like, in addition to just wanting to be an idol, she really loves fashion a lot. Like she likes, especially like very like floral and pastel fashion, like I described in her intro episode. And I think her ultimate dream is actually to design costumes for idols. Um, so she got Aww. into a design program at an art school or, or fashion design school or something of that sort. Um, and she vastly underestimated how brutal design programs are. <laughs> and how little time oh, no. they leave you to do anything else. But she's a queen. She yeah. is a queen. And I know mm-hmm. that she's just going to mm-hmm. create all the best fits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. She's lo- she loves what she's doing in her program. Uh, I think she's just very disappointed that it leaves her very little time on the side to actually pursue like her being an idol as well. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah, why she was rough. so happy that she found the time to make um, cookies for everybody. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> I love her. Yeah, no, I really yeah. hope we see her again. We will see her again because yeah. I'm the GM and I say so. I was going to say, <laughs> I was gonna say like, isn't, that your, isn't that your choice? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how, where the narrative takes us. It what takes works for the us, story. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is me just wanting to figure out this timeline. Hmm? 
Um, Mela asks, um, one of my biggest questions is in regard to just how long ago the phenomenon of super idol started and if other countries have their own super idol scenes. Mm. Like, how long has this been going on? Uh, well, it, it, it's, that, it's like 15 that part years, is a more right? concrete answer in the question. Like it, It's in the opening monologue that this happened about 15 years ago. Um, and actually, I can actually pull up my, I have a special secret world timeline that only I can see. Ooh. And let me, I, and let me actually, I have a date even. <laughs> Let it be known that I did my homework. I knew it was fifteen years. Thanks. <laughs> it literally, I won't. To, I won't Damn, give the exact okay. date because I, who knows? Maybe it'll be a spoiler someday. I mean, but um, I I knew too, but I wasn't going to put Drac on blast. <laughs> I will. Wow. Or or Mella. No, wow. it's it's fine because like it's it literally goes by really quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to know the exact date and second, okay? And none of you know that, do you? Liv, what is the exact date and second? Please tell me exactly. You don't know. You don't even know the year, <laughs> beloved, okay? <laughs> All I want to say, though, is I'm not yelling at Mela. Mela is a viewer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Drac is part of the show. He should know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, okay. Cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. It was great playing with you guys. Um, Bye! I'm gonna head out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, I'm staying just to spite Liv now. <laughs> There's just so many whiplash feelings that are just going on in this particular. Like, now you know we bring this all to the table yes. at every every yeah. recording session. We're just ready for the whiplash. <laughs> I apologize deeply. I also I apologize. I also apologize for Liv deeply. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh. Um, so when I say about 15 years, the, the the time period I have in mind is roughly like early 2006-ish is what, is what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's about when people start to notice like, hey, weird stuff's going on. Um, people couldn't set people on fire before, at least not without more effort than that. There's a baby that glows and it wants to sing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Um, and it takes people a while to figure out the connection between why people have powers uh, and well, it takes people a while to, uh, to figure out why people are getting powers, because it's not clear at first. <laughs> and I really should fill out more of this world timeline than I have, but I have filled it up to, like, 2009-ish. So I, I have a pretty good idea of how the early days of Super Idoldom went, and that's why I keep referencing it by people who are like, oh, remember the bad old days. <laughs> um, but anyway, just more to the second part of the question, which we haven't really touched on yet. Um, and I will say I haven't done as much, like, figuring into this part of it yet, because I, I feel like I would need to, like, actually research the music scenes of other countries as they exist in our world in order to answer this in more detail. But I can at least say that, yes, Ed, like, everywhere around the world has their own specific, like, super idol scenes and, like, styles of music that are popular and, like, styles of show that are popular, um, uh, like... For sure, like the the super idol, idol world is as vibrant and different as the real world music scene is. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll explore that in our world tour arc of the series. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm kind of curious for the Long folks who genius. are in like not like North America right now, like uh, or who know about other music scenes from other countries in more detail. Like, do you what do you think would translate from like that country's music scene over to like a super idol world? Let me <laughs> flip this question back around on y'all. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think I think it'd be very funny. Um, just the idea of it, of uh, grime rappers <laughs> being super idols. Um, which is just a very just very UK rappers. I'm um, so like Stormzy being a super idol would be the most hilarious thing to me. So yeah, no, I think I think it'd be I think there'd be super idols. I think they would have a pretty big super idol scene here. Um. I mean, Adele has to have fire-based powers, right? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. she's gotta have fire-based powers. And maybe storm-based powers. I'm just thinking, like, I know Storms, he definitely has storm all. powers. <laughs> right? <laughs> so the fire is just going. <laughs> See, I was thinking water just because I'm thinking of rolling in the rolling deep. Rolling in the deep, yeah. I'm thinking of setting fire to the yeah. rain, so both. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that is Wait, like it's maybe cool. the avatar as well i was gonna say was adele the nova of the uk before Jaden took over and that's why he had to leave maybe that type of power <laughs> wow. set is more that's common the in the real. uk 
Oh my god, Maybe spoilers. Maybe with a ridiculous weather pattern and inconsistency I mean, here, it makes sense. <laughs> because here's the thing. She has set fire to the rain, she has rolled in the deep, and she has chased pavements. Those are three out of the four yeah. elements. <laughs> What's the yeah. truth? What's she the has. truth? Yeah, no. Um, when when Janie became a Nova, um, <laughs> she, came, she showed up to his house as like, there's only room for one of us in this country. And uh, he was like... <laughs> Shit, yeah, no, you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Canada. Anyway. Just <laughs> see, I'm gonna school in Canada. Canada. Yeah, I was thinking more along Canada. the lines of that there can only be one. And uh, spoilers, um, Jaden is the Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> I I consumed I consumed Adele and gained her powers. I've been lying to everyone about how I got my powers. I ate Adele. You didn't. And I had to leave the country. You didn't um, hurt your sister. You ate Adele. <laughs> I, I, I had to leave the country because I'm a wanted man in the UK. <laughs> so, I can't believe we haven't caught on to this the whole time. That's crazy. And this, no, whole, I, this whole nice guy persona is a facade. He just didn't realize that. It. I thought I thought the subtext was obvious. <laughs> yeah, who in the who's actually yeah, as naive clear. and nice as Jaden? It, it, it's clearly a cover up. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That's that's the boy who's running from something. Something he did. Um, That's why he's chasing those patrons. I have another general question (laughs) that I'd like to ask. Yeah. Um, And this one, I guess, for the whole group. But uh, if magically there was time, money, people, and energy for another actual play series, what games would you run? Mm -hmm. Drac, you're Mm. not allowed to answer this. Um... (laughs) Why? Um, well, I did <laughs> want to hear from Drag definitely on this one. <laughs> follow Drag on Twitter where every other day he tweets about whatever show he wishes he could produce. <laughs> the thing is, I'm working on a lot of shows right now, so just... just <laughs> yeah, we get it. You're kind of answer. a big deal. I'm not a big deal. I just have a problem. I... <laughs> <laughs> The problem is your big deal. <laughs> to, to not bring the series that shall not be named into it. Um, but if anybody needed like time travel powers to do everything they wanted to do in a day, um, I think it would probably be drag. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. I would. Yeah. Okay, I haven't. I had an idea. I have an idea. There is one that I really want to do. Um, I don't. Know if, I don't know if anyone in this group will even care or be interested in it. But I would really love to just do a really calm and peaceful slice of life like i feel like he could tell very interesting stories like almost like monster hearts but without the monsters i guess mm-hmm. um, i think it's very possible uh to have a interesting actual play that doesn't have isn't life or death yeah mm-hmm. 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 like mm-hmm. i think one i had i've had floating around in my head for a very long time and i hopefully plan on doing is like a, a one space on a sports anime and I like the idea of the high stakes being, you know, the tournament that's coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no one has to die. Uh, maybe not even as drastic as someone leaving the team soon. Just like, just, they all want to win and they all have a passion for this thing. And I've been so excited ever yeah, since you mentioned it on I'd Twitter, use, honestly. Um, uh, Fight with Spirit um, mm-hmm. from, it's, it's, a, it's in Kickstarter, I think, or going to be in Kickstarter. It's by Story Brewers, the same people who did Good Society. And I got to play test it and it was a ton of fun. And that kind of sparked the idea. Um, so I'd probably use that system when and it actually comes out. they're great designers too. Yeah. Story and, just, and they're also yeah. great people. They're really sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, I had this idea when I was a youngin in the TTRPG space. Um, so of course my go-to system was D&D, which, you know, s- no disrespect to D&D. Criticism, yes, but no disrespect. Um, but since then, I have definitely changed my mind. I'm not quite sure what system would work best. I would have to do some research into it. But as a long-term uh, Percy Jackson fan... Mm-hmm. I know the system. I know a system you can use. Scion. Okay. I'm Scion 2 <laughs> I've been thinking about this as well. <laughs> um, City of Mist. City of Mist is, really City of Mist is a good one. Mm-hmm. But um, ew, City of Mist actually might be really, really good for the particular hook because what i basically want my players to do this would be the the gimmick right is it's a percy jackson you know camp half blood type of situation where in our character building sessions i would basically like come up with a questionnaire i'd have like a really long conversation an interview with the player being like okay what kind of character do you want to play what are like some personality traits that you want to give me? 
what do you think like their experience is and just ask them a bunch of like in-depth personality questions with very few power-based questions like obviously i'd want to know like what kind of stuff makes you excited what kind of stuff do you think is really really cool you know and then based off of that information and their consent and their final approval i would build out a character playbook for them give it Mm. to them and be like okay these are based off of everything you've told me about your character i've determined who their parent is and these are the abilities that you have Mm. you don't know anything else and you discover more about yourself and your powers and your abilities and who you are as we go through the story that's so cool that's very cool nice city of mist would probably be better for that then yeah yeah, because City of Mist has, like, a very, like, a, a personality quiz of a character yeah. creation yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. But I I don't know if it's too broad. But, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's like, my dream to, like, run a, a game like that. Wow. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Very involved. A little lofty. But one day I'll get there. I hope that there. becomes a reality someday, then. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. thanks. I... That would be yeah. awesome. I'd be up for it. I also have one that I've always wanted to run, Ooh. and it's um, it probably either be a monster of the world or I hunt. But basically, um, I wanted to take like the idol training system and just maybe like set it in LA, but just basically have people who are training to be in an idol group, but their agency doesn't have enough money. So to make more money, they have to hunt <laughs> monsters. Ooh. Yeah, okay. I hunt. You yeah, so, I hunt uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're touching on like one of my home games where we're a band. It's a monster of the week game where we're a band that's not very successful. So we monster <laughs> hunt on tour. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, yeah. yeah, I love it. And I was inspired by like old. This is a problematic series in the fandom too. But there's a series with BTS called American Hustle Life, and they basically. They go to the United States in LA to learn about hip hop from, and you can, if you're cringing, yeah. 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 So um, it it wasn't all terrible. Like their scenes with Warren G were really good. Um, They also had Coolio on there and he was understandably frustrated with a bunch of things. Um, But Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go delve into it but i did want to take that idea of an idol group in la training to be an idol group because there's parts where they're like giving out flyers to market the show and their shows and stuff like that this was this was back before like bts was the bts we know you know Mm -hmm. and uh i was like i wanted to take that but also like the ridiculous idol training regimen so they're (laughs) also like doing evaluations for all their dances and stuff like that and then (laughs) but they're also totally poor and just barely like paying all the bills Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i love that i love take this as a if if anybody's listening to this and is looking for ideas for actual play podcast there's a there's a market out there for uh shows with hooks with a lot of structure to them it sounds like like yeah. tournaments and yeah. uh, reality shows and training regiments and such. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it makes for great uh, for great listening, also for planning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I when I do run games, I tend to not have a like a specific plot or idea for the game, and just sort of pick games that are good at coming up with that sort of as you go, but. I've been running uh, Legacy Second Edition by Mina McJanda lately, and that's that's a really interesting game in that the players have a lot of influence on creating the world uh, along with the GM. Like in, in that game, the the sort of main hook is that each player has a playbook for their character, but they also have a playbook for their family that is like or organization that the character comes from, and you play different characters from the same families across generations. So the the setup is almost like a gemless game where everybody picks elements from their their playbook where it says like pick something that is like a sign from something left over from before the apocalypse and then pick something that is a holdover from the apocalypse and pick something that is a, a looming threat and the the GM can take like an unused playbook and and add elements from that playbook as well. So you end up with 
all of these things that everyone's sort of created together, and then you you figure out how all of these pieces fit together. And I think that would be really fun to like start off a podcast. Mm. Like, you know, a, a lot of shows, especially ones that that go through different systems and different seasons have been running a sort of world building game like the quiet year mm -hmm. like to sort of create the world together before a full season of a different game or uh i've i've used i'm sorry did you say street magic yeah which is a, another sort of great, world building game. great game great game we yeah. use that for season two of a stream i'm doing to like build mm -hmm. the world nice nice but yeah i think it's really cool that legacy sort of has that built in um yeah and fellowship. an even more expanded form i've yeah, i've been wanting to play that yeah. for a while too uh, Fellowship by Val Mini also has a lot of similar player authority and buy-in on building the world together. Uh, in that one, you, you only have one playbook, but your playbook is also the culture that your character comes from, and the player gets the say on that. And it's uh, like, if you are playing the dwarf, then you decide what the dwarves are like. So I think, I, think hmm. I would probably want to run either one of those, or honestly, because I'm always messing with games a combination of them maybe have a more a more fantasy style legacy game nice. um, mostly mostly because i'm lazy and i could get all the players to do all the work for me <laughs> <laughs> that's like i'm not gonna lie that's the appeal for me too is just like you yeah. could build the world together and mm -hmm. people are more invested in that world and also as a dm you don't have to do as much work in mm -hmm. advance mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah that's just i don't know one of the great things about I don't know, indie tabletop in general is just how they're rethinking how the table looks and how the players yeah. interact with each other in general is super cool. Mm. Yeah. Luca, did you give one? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was about to ask if oh, Luca yeah. had one. <laughs> well, uh, I've been on and off working on uh, like uh, a setting. Mm. It's uh, kind of like uh, a borrowers inspired eye fantasy, like Ooh. tiny people in a huge mansion. Ooh. Oh. But it's still. I'd like to do, well, maybe Fellowship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure a good one. And other than that, if I had to do something with the uh, published thing, I, I'd i be wanting to try the, the Dracula dossier for a while. Oh, it's the, the this, what, sorry? Uh, it's uh, the Dracula dossier. It's a nice... Uh, Dracula dossier. It's a very interesting modular campaign because it, it gives you literally the entirety of Dracula. Yeah, I've heard about this. Ooh. With a bunch of annotations and changes and things, and players are expected to read the whole book and find yeah. and like act like analysts. Uh, and for everything, you have a, a lot of different options for clues and things and people. You can, like, it's a giant sandbox and it gives you all the tools to build a lot of different stories. Ooh, I really like yes. that, the idea of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I'd like to try sometimes. Yeah, no, well, let us know if you're if you do get to try it because I would love to hear more about how that how that would play out. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that. That's something I think I've I've heard a lot of people saying is uh something that they don't necessarily have time to get into with the group with how how in depth it is, but would be really interesting. And I think it'd be really interesting to hear that like on a podcast mm -hmm. as well for sure. Yeah, like I definitely I think a game like that for me, I think I've always wanted to, I like I've had the book for ages, but because it's kind of a like a long and thick book mm -hmm. <laughs> by my standards of what game what types of games I think I'm capable of running um is uh is paranoia. <laughs> um, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Just because the style of humor in that game is really up my alley, um but it is a lot crunchier of a system than I think um that I have interest in running personally so i think ideally i would like to play in a paranoia campaign before i would yeah. run one <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for those who, who don't know what it is it's a, the campaign where it's a very like 1984 sci-fi type future where like an all seeing all knowing computer controls every aspect of society and you are a, a clone within this society who is simultaneously working to sniff out the communist and is also a secret communist. <laughs> I, I think I remember the game being described as uh, during character creation, you are told without question that um, it is illegal to be part of any secret society. And then you are assigned to a secret society. And then <laughs> you are told that, you know, it is illegal to be a mutant. And then you roll on the table of mutations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And they, they specifically, because you are a clone, they have a, a system built in for, like, your character's expected to, to die, and every time they die, like, you get, like, progressively more mutated as you keep coming back <laughs> wrong. Oh. Okay, that sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and also just, like, it, it's very, like, lends itself to a lot of really, like, fun, dark sci-fi humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of backstabbing. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like it with a name like paranoia yeah exactly well you get to play like a very like paranoid campaign where like somebody asks you a question and very like who's asking like (laughs) that type of energy i actually had a question if we're still doing questions oh yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. charlie asks if you had to pick a different style slash aesthetic for your characters what would you pick because we are a very stylish crew, if I do say so yeah. myself. That's true. I would go punk. Oh, hell mm-hmm. yeah. A- oh my god, she was both a skater boy and a ballerina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know what Isn't it any more obvious? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I don't know what the name of the style I'm thinking of is. Is this the stuff I, Drac, would love to be able to pull up, but I don't think I can. Um, but just give me a second. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to show the picture in China. You can tell me what it, me- what it is. But... I got you, Bestie. I got you. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, I'm always of two minds with style myself. I either want to go full goth or full pink pastel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just cute fluff. And so I would have just gone the other way. With, Inside with you are two cosplayers. Yes. <laughs> Inside of you, there are two cosplayers fighting. <laughs> <laughs> They're both gay. Yes. <laughs> They're having tea. Yeah, that's the fight. What They're kind of tea are they going to have? Actually. <laughs> um, I, realized, I realized Googling it doesn't help because I don't know what it's called. So I don't know what to fucking Google. Um, <laughs> is there a specific character you could Google? <laughs> okay, describe um, it. Describe okay. it. I got you. Describe it. Um, It's like very casual formal, I guess. Business casual. Does that make sense? Beloved? Like, a- is it business casual? Is that what I'm thinking? Hold on. I don't know if that is it. Though. That's the thing. Like very like much like classy. a button down, just like classy. Like, yeah, very classy, but like effortlessly classy. Um, I would want Lucia to go full Afro punk. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. She she I'd transforms and she just has like just the thickest longest locks and like this these really cool fits yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> and says so she's a 90s pop star um i mean who says she can't have both eventually i mean eventually yeah. you know you know i'm okay i'm not gonna lie a big reason i asked this because was uh was because i wanted to know what queen bee's alternative yeah. style would mm. be because <laughs> she's so fashion she's such fashion I mean, honestly like our listeners will find out that uh i'm gonna try a few different uh, outfits yes mm-hmm. oh okay but uh honestly i'm not sure if i had to redesign queen bee what would i do maybe something a lot swinging 60s Ooh. Oh Ooh, yeah, like full yes. on, yeah, like with the big glasses yeah. Yeah. and yeah, 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 and with the, the mini dress boots. and the knee high boots, mm-hmm. something like that, like go go dancer like, kind of. Oh my god, yes, a bit. lots yeah, of stripes. I, <gasps> I can Would definitely she see have that? a yes. beehive hairstyle. Oh. Uh, I don't Ooh. think we have a choice in the matter. <laughs> 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 and uh, Karen would absolutely all, be all about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i can think of only one last question so. that was super on my mind unless anybody else has a question also from charlie with the bangers um <laughs> if you sang on the podcast and didn't have to worry about copyright laws what song would you want your character to sing or perform the most stay tonight by chung ha <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> um boss bitch by doja cat Ooh. Leave the door open by Bruno Mars and, and mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, how dare you? It's first of all, it's Silk Sonic featuring Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. Please don't put any disrespect on his name. Silk Sonic, damn. <laughs> Damn. But, I love yeah, Anderson. I think, I think it would be like a thing where he because he can play all the instruments. I think he played most of the instruments that are uh, used in that song. So I think it'd be like a thing where you, he's singing while layering it on each time, and I think that'd be pretty damn cool. Uh, I honestly, I 
don't know enough music, but I can't can't think of anything that would I would shout out. So I'm just gonna pass. Oh, fair enough. Okay. I think well, for like an action scene, I would go with the uh, "Hit Me with Your Best Shot" by Pat Benatar. Ooh. Yeah, nice. absolutely. I can see that. But for a quiet Allen musical moment, uh, I would probably have them sing uh, "The Coolest Girl" from the Harry Potter sequel soundtrack. Oh, I love that song, Aww. actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our our wonderful dialogue and cleanup editor, Kathleen, uh, asks, uh, for the cast, have game mechanics like a character's playbook or role results affected the way that you think about your character's personality? Um, Not really, actually, for me. Yeah, fair enough. I think it was the other way around for me. I started like, messing around with my stats and stuff based on my character's personality, you know the other way around. Jaden wants to be an idol really badly and is practicing as much as he can, so I have this freak high. Um I, but I also want him to be like a at least semi likable guy. <laughs> um so his mundane is fairly high as well. Um but because of how naive he is, literally everything else is low. Like that's kind of like the <laughs> mindset I went into it with and that's how I kind of worked with his stats. So it's kind of the other way around for me. Yeah, fair. There's a I'll keep it short. I'll keep it sweet. There is a delinquent move called, uh, I think it's called Mary Contrary. Um, basically is you will not perceive me <laughs> as a playbook <laughs> move. <laughs> um, but basically it's the idea that anytime anybody tries to pierce my mask, I can deflect. And I feel like that's very Lucia. Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I like saw that and I was like, well, that I have to take that move. Like there's no other option. <laughs> So I'm not quite sure if that's like influencing, but it it helped me go with the delinquent playbook. Mm-hmm. I think the the mechanics do a pretty good job of both reflecting the emotional state and also just sort of giving us failed roles and opportunities to sort of discover our characters uh, without pushing us in specific directions necessarily. Yeah. I do think that uh, the the abilities that I picked for Valerie, which are telekinesis, psychic constructs, and body transmutation, sort of shaped her her personality a bit because i ended up with her having a very you know powers that that involve sort of creating and moving things around and not being very direct and so and the way she uses her psychic constructs to make swords sort of to help drive that idea that she's her performance at least is is very aggressive and even if that's not how she she always is off the stage. And so I think that was interesting, like figuring out what powers she had based on the the abilities available for the Doomed playbook and and how, you know, what kind of personality traits would lead to having those abilities as part of her performance or as has uh, come up in the show in the case of body transmutation that she does not want to use in the show. And that is another aspect of her personality of just no, I'm not going to do that. That's I don't think people will think that's weird. Mm-hmm. I can like stretch my body or or change the shape, but I I don't want to. That I think that mm-hmm. that says something interesting about her personality as well. Yeah, I think your answer kind of leads into one of the other uh, one of the GM questions that we have here, actually. Um, but although, does anybody mm. have any other answers for this before we move on to the to that one? Well, I realized I tend to mark uh, guilty more often than any other. Thing condition oh yeah <laughs> and i yeah yeah i think alan was probably raised vaguely catholic oh yeah yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah that tracks Very yeah. Vaguely. i it feel i feel that to, deeply to mess you up for life <laughs> me too <laughs> yeah. i do think actually that's luca you bring up a great point um what condition you're more likely to mark I think says a lot. I mean, obviously, Angie's out here marking angry conditions left and right. <laughs> but like, <laughs> that says something about the character, too, you know? Yeah. I mean, it does um, fit that she has a temper in the playbook. I think the only main thing would be like how focused her anger usually is, I think, would have been the major surprise. Like, she's not just a fuse waiting to go off all the time. It's usually something specific will set her off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll light that fuse. Yeah. Yeah. She gets it from her mom, the F-bomber, so. (laughs) (laughs) F-bomber. I always forget that that we actually do swear in this podcast, and then I remember, (laughs) oh, yeah, Angie's mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, no, no. It's a, I'm a very big believer in like we don't we don't have to like censor our swears or anything on this show. Like we're adults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and G's mom swears at her little brother. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck down here, Freddy. Stop <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> yeah. Jaden would never swear. Uh, I want to save that f bomb for like a very important. Oh yeah, occasion. that's how you know it's gonna get oh, like the yeah. realest it's ever been. Oh um, yeah, we have to have mm-hmm. Fred or um, Jaden come over for dinner. <laughs> we'll have to do oh, dinner God. at everybody's house. Oh, Jaden would. I think Jaden would cry if he heard the way all of you shouted at each other. <laughs> I think he would just start crying at the table. Aww. We have to have family dinner with Angie's family, though. Oh, Ooh, we, have we have to. to. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. if you all have, yeah. have, like, the equivalent of, like, a cast party or something where everybody's families are invited. <laughs> no. Oh. No, Lucy is not inviting her family. <laughs> <laughs> She's just not telling yeah. them. Her dad will actually bust out the polos this time. <laughs> Angie's got the cool mom of the group. I yeah. <laughs> I think um, Jaden's parents wouldn't be able to come unless someone pays for them to fly over. Um, oh, but, yeah. Um, I think I would like. I like to think that Jaden would be um, all of the parents. Like, you know, everyone has that one friend that they're like, "Hey, I'm going to this party with this person," and the parents are like, "Okay, cool. That person's going with you. I trust that everything's going to be okay." <laughs> I think Jaden might end up being that friend um, for a few people, and Karen. I feel like Karen definitely has that energy, yeah. mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. Jaden has it and doesn't deserve it um, because he's not. A f- um, Forceful or affirmative enough to stop people from making bad decisions. Um, He's always looking to the other ladies of the group. To- yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the parents think that oh, he's a lovely, he's a lovely kid. He won't let my uh, my kid get into trouble. <laughs> but anyway, the the semi related question I I wanted to to get into to add to ask myself yeah. one of the GM questions. Right. Um, Rowan from again from our Discord asks, um, what are the criteria for someone getting powers and how is it linked to who they are, if at all? Kind of like Vaporwave. Yes, give us the lore drop. Yeah. Let's go. Yes. Um, so the, the criteria for super idol powers is, is fittingly still very mysterious. Obviously, it's connected to music in some way. But the fact that like you can be really into creating music and being into music and still not get powers... like demonstrates that it's not to do with like how strongly you necessarily are into music it seems to be somewhat random in that way but definitely you are a little more likely to get powers than not if you are really into music and it doesn't have to be your like number one passion in life it just has to be something that you sincerely love and like want to participate in beyond just listening to it um, yeah. and I've specifically said in like our world building stuff that like, you don't have to necessarily be a performer even to get super idol powers. You just have to be involved in the creation of music in some way. So like, I specifically wanted to do that so that we could have like DJs be idols or remixers or producers or yeah. like all, any of those sorts of people who aren't necessarily on a stage, but nonetheless are very passionate about music. It's kind of like a um, all super idols love music, but not all people who love music are super idols. Exactly, mm. um, and there are uh, uh, not so, not specific spoilers, but there are reasons why it is like that. I have tons of GM notes about how the super idol magic works in this world that won't be dropped for a while, hopefully. Mm. <laughs> I think Karen is the god of the world, the goddess <laughs> of the world, and she just deemed it so. There's no real reason. She just, she, she created the universe, and on the seventh day, she rested, you know? She's I just don't listening to the Beatles album. Karen literally and then... decides who gets powers and who doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to, to drag it back to the question at this <laughs> uh, I, there was a, there was a part of the question I haven't asked yet, and it's, it's how is it linked to who they are as a person? I do like to think it is at least partially... Uh, like whatever power you get is at least partially determined by the type of person you are not like so strict that it like you can tell everything about a person based on their powers but like there's some aspect of you that is reflected in what powers manifest i like to think kind of in like a persona or jojo's Mm. type of way yeah Yeah. i think that makes sense that's kind of what i thought about when i was picking my powers as an over as well Mm -hmm. i think that makes sense yeah if only because it's narratively is more interesting that way Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like um, yeah. when you get a vision in Genshin Impact, a uh, new patch 
Inazuma coming in two weeks. You know, you should check it out, everyone. <laughs> uh, like, oh. Not sponsored, but if Genshin does want to sponsor us, you can be. Yeah, like shout out. We love folks. We love witches that are mm-hmm. librarian and astronomer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, we you do. don't say. You don't say. But yeah, I, but yeah, I will say, like, sometimes the connection between a person and their powers is very nebulous and, like, oh, it, oh, if you think about it this way, this reflects this part of my innermost psyche. And other times it, it really is just, like, yo, vaping is the shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Or Honestly, I like vaporwave just like chilling around like <laughs> on a couch in the basement, just like sharing Yo. a vape when it just happened. <laughs> they were just jamming to some tunes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Not, not I got bit get... by a radioactive vape and just <laughs> not to get like too substance in about it, but like can you imagine being high out of your mind and all of a sudden you have super idol powers? <laughs> <laughs> they're just Whoa. making electronic music and they're like i'm really feeling God. it i'm just feeling it and then all of a sudden they're just walking on vapor <laughs> like this shit yeah. Yeah, this is probably a communal discovery on vape and waves part <laughs> this, this shit, shit be hitting <laughs> yeah. this shit is hitting just building bro. literally <laughs> getting high yes. together oh god i love that yeah. What a what a dream team. What a couple. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. <sighs> Speaking of vape, by the way, I feel like um I should bounce off of that one and um and ask um one of Lee's questions. Uh Lee, yeah. our, our lovely friend also from Otherware Lee. and uh, voice Lee. of vape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lee sent us two specific character questions. Um first off, so where does Valerie get her clothes and um what's her fave look? All right. So quick answer is a hot topic because i don't actually know any goth clothing brands besides hot topic but (laughs) she's also just a complete nerd and like me uh would have been buying anime t-shirts before and so it's a natural place to transition to full-time goth Mm -hmm. and i i don't usually think about what my characters are wearing aside from general feel so i don't have like a lot of different looks in mind but i think in like in the fall where the show is now, uh, I think I'm going to say her current favorite look is like a uh, black tank top and like mesh sleeved shirt, a uh, pleated skirt with leggings and some some boots and fingerless gloves. Some, something that says, look at me, I'm so cool and tough, but also not too cold. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I definitely didn't write all of that down in advance because I wouldn't be able to think of something on the spot. No, it's, it's a good look. It's a very good look. <laughs> um, and Lee's other question is uh, for Queen Bee. If Queen Bee could collab with any other artist or idol, um, either in our super idol world or in our real world, uh, who would it be and what would they do together? Hmm. Yeah, no, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Phantasm. Like, uh, it's the other self of uh, uh, one of the other work characters and uh, they're like uh, gentleman thief idol they take over other people's shows yeah <laughs> and, uh, i love that angle so much yeah. it's fun mischief mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think they would create a really interesting stage show <laughs> Uh, and it, it does tie into uh, um, Eric, the other half of Vaporwave, um, also did ask, is anyone in Rhythmix a fan of either uh, Quint or Phantasm? Um, specifically, the full name of Quint in this case is Quintessential Harmony. I mean, I think so. I think Jaden would be. I think Jaden listens to like every everything and everyone and is a big fan of everyone. I think that's the type of person Jaden is, <laughs> at least right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I think he definitely would be a fan of Quint and Phantasm. Very cool. Yeah, and I I really want to be very clear that we are absolutely establishing canonically that these other rare character other selves exist in our super idol Mm -hmm. universe. Yes. Yes, and I think uh, I seem to remember uh, uh, Charlie, that's uh, Phantom's player, describing their their look as being like uh, a, a gentleman thief with a cape, but like more dark gothic, you know, goth look and valerie would eat that up mm. absolutely i can see that it's very anime very genre mm-hmm. too especially very, with like the if they still have like the blue hair yeah very very edgelord very anime wow 
Uh, edgelord affectionately, I say. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we only ever say that term lovingly around here. <laughs> Uh, I think I want to ask a question from uh, Ryan Nicole over from our friends of the show over at uh, The Game is a Foot podcast, another show from our BA Roll Dice Network. If all the idols had to swap powers, who would they swap with and why? Oh. Are you asking, like, what would our characters with each, want? With each other, with yeah. What would the players want? What would the players want, want. yeah. Or, I I, well, it says different. who would they swap with, Think like, the if the characters yeah. had to decide, I guess, it sounds like. Okay. Um, Angie would go with Elementum's power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I think she fantasized about getting, like, you know, a fist just made of earth. And, <laughs> oh, that's going to be a, you know, punching her enemies, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. I was about to just reveal a big spoiler. And I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna punch someone that frustrates her, which is uh But like well, that like, could be oops. anyone in the series. Yeah. <laughs> well we can assume that people have listened to the finale of Arc One at least for this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Me love the player. I love the bull playbook, but I think that's low key because I'm a bull in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent, yeah. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. So when you were like, do you mean the playoffs? Like, she's going to say the pearl. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Don't need you calling me out like that. <laughs> um, but uh, Lucia would want Phoebe's powers and abilities. Those weapons are too damn cool, man. Those Ooh. weapons are cool. <laughs> I think Jaden would want Lucia's abilities. He it's it's much less um dangerous. <laughs> uh especially like I think beforehand. You can you say it, thoroughly... you can say it. She's a wimp. You can say it. <laughs> no, I personally me as Drac, I really and me even me as Drac, I really enjoy I like the luck based powers. I think the the subtlety of it all is really cool. But um Jaden is a emotionally weak. Um <laughs> and he if he hurts anyone with his powers, I don't think he'd be able to handle it very well. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Lucia's powers are much less likely to cause drastic damage to someone. Me as Drac, I want Vivi's abilities as well. Um I would love to <laughs> mess around with and Doomed is my so Doomed is my favorite playbook, followed by Nova. So I'm just naturally drawn to the Doomed playbook. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Hmm. And I also love having, I also love putting the Doom playbook on a character like Jaden, because I think that's the epitome of like polar opposite personality and power. A very optimistic, happy go lucky person with a power that's slowly possibly going to kill him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I think of anyone's, Vivi would probably want uh, Angie's, uh, Bane Raven's powers, because she would like to not be as easily hurt, would, would like to be, uh, you know, Super strong and durable, but also, I was thinking maybe, uh, maybe Lucia's. But I think Vivi is is honestly a little too aggressive to not have a, a very attack focused set of abilities. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What um, are you, Luca? I think uh, I think oh, Vivi's powers are super stylish, and there's uh, like a big temptation with Angie's strength, but I think in the end Queen Bee would pick Jaden's powers. Mm. Just so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, when you're the Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> One day he's going to eventually reach his Avatar states and it'll be all <laughs> over for everyone to see. It's not a good thing. <laughs> Looking at your current track record that the audience has, that's not a good thing. <laughs> hey. I mean... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I can I can hear you putting your hands behind your head and leaning back casually. <laughs> Just hear that. Just a lot of shrugging. Just a lot of like hands up, clapping them, hands mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I do have uh, one question I wanted to answer in particular. Yeah, I was wondering if you if you still had time to uh, like the time and energy to answer this one because. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to talk about it a bit. Uh, Jenny Blaze asks, uh, how long has Valerie been out as trans? Were her parents very accepting or was it a bit of a bumpier ride? Uh, so uh, Valerie has been uh, out as trans and started to transition publicly uh, around the, the start of the summer before this season of 
super idols. Uh, she confided in her, her older sister, Alice, a while before that. And while Alice encouraged her to open up to their parents, she also respected Valerie's wish to keep it a secret until shortly before the summer. Um, and one reason that Valerie's actual transition has been off screen is that I don't know what it's like to transition as a teenager or as someone living with one's parents. I didn't transition until I was well into being an adult and living on my own. So I, I can't like speak to that exact experience. But what I can say from experience is that um, her parents knew for a long time that something was bothering her, tried to reach out and let her know that they wanted to help, but also, you know, respect her privacy, didn't want to, didn't want to push her on anything she wasn't ready to open up about or snoop around. Um, when she did tell them that she wanted to transition, they didn't understand the reasons, but were just happy to see her opening up and they just wanted to see her, uh, living the life she wanted. So as gloomy as Valerie might seem, it's obvious to anyone that knew her before how much happier and more present in the world she is so that was you know if if they had any doubts they they didn't voice them and seeing how much uh happier it made her would have eliminated those doubts um they probably should have been more suspicious when she wanted to sign a contract with rain shadow records mm. um but she had already laid out a plan of what she was going to do before even telling them that she wanted to transition. She was like, and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And they're going to, you know, they're going to help me pay for new clothes and things. And th then I can be an idol, which by the way, I've also always wanted to do. And I haven't brought it up to you before because this is a big thing. <sighs> and so they sort of trusted that she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Oh, I really, I really am glad that it was like that. Honestly, I, I don't really know how about better, better to describe it. Like not knowing the experience myself but i really do like i, I joke sometimes that like the, all the all the families on this show like virtually all of them have been like extremely supportive and loving but honestly like i think it was you Liv, who who said to me at one point that like it that it is kind of refreshing to have like supportive families in a show like this in a like a teen oriented mm -hmm. narrative cuz like a lot of yeah. times yeah. they aren't like even angie's family is like not like the greatest but like there's there's some kind of yeah. unit going on there and uh, slight spoilers for later but there there's more family building on in angie's storyline to come as well mm -hmm. there is and it's not that it's a toxic situation at home it's like i think like the fans of or the fan i'm gonna call them our fans <laughs> our mixers um, the mixers, the mixers. <laughs> yeah mixers. The, our mixers yeah, yeah. that's right yes. um <laughs> <laughs> They've heard, though, that, like, her dad's, you know, pretty chill guy. I always think of him as, like, the dad and Daria. Yeah. They just, I feel like they have yeah. that same that same energy. Mm. And But, like, you can tell that, like, they still have a house and stuff like that. And it's more like she's mad at them for a very specific reason. Mm -hmm. And they're just giving... I, I always interpret it as they're giving her the space to like feel what she needs to feel mm -hmm. and like let her come to them when she's ready. Yeah. Less that. And I mean, she invited them to the show. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. She did eventually open up to them. Like the, the mm -hmm. parents are definitely still like the not perfect parents, obviously, but like they're more there's, really a, there's they're way more great. going on there than just like <laughs> mm -hmm. they're they're definitely not mean parents at that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, don't we all want to embezzle from a corporation at the exactly. end of the day? Oh, like, oh, I mean, honestly, yeah. they're they're the heroes in somebody's story. Um, yeah. That's true. That's but I right. mean, yeah. not to get too deep into it, but I, I do think a big part of growing up is realizing that your parents were just people who woke up one day and realized, oh, wow, we're bringing a whole other person into this world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's yeah. figure that out. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But... I think it's particularly in a story about the arts, let alone a story that has a lot of like intersectional identities like ours. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. easy to look at 
both of those things and be like, my parents, my fictional parents would never support me. Um, so it's just, it's yeah. nice that like mm -hmm. in a world where there's mm -hmm. a, a trans musical kid, her parents are like, okay, sweetie, just stay safe and have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. <laughs> you love it. We I, have enough stories of suffering, I think, mm -hmm. in yeah. my opinion. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Don't need to add to it. Yeah, I'll, like, I'll also yeah. say that, like, I'm very, very fortunate to have very loving and supportive parents in my life, and I, yes. I appreciate them a lot. And so, I know that's not the case for a lot of a lot of people, but mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's also just drawn from, like I said, from my experience of having very, very supportive parents, both before my transition as a as an awkward teenager and and now mm -hmm. also the just to, to tell a, a related anecdote about uh, especially in the of like you know whatever makes you happy uh, my, my family moved when I was like about to start high school and it took me a while to to like make new friends and when I when I finally did like make friends at school and I was at anime club uh probably unsurprisingly and like asked if if I could have them come over to like hang out and play games. Uh, my mom was just like, "Yes, of course. I'm just I'm so happy you have friends. They can come over <laughs> anytime. <laughs> they can use the TV. Your father and I will go to the mm -hmm. movies. So you can you can just hang out without without us being oh. around." I love that we can bring that energy to to, to Valerie's parents as well. Then, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. That's so cute. <laughs> Um, I think I think we're probably close to wrapping this up at one point. Um, and I I know exactly the question that I I want to finish on. I think. Oh okay. okay. Um, because it does seem like a very like sum up type of question. So this one again uh, to do uh, two again playing the hits. Jenny Blaze again asks for each player and Aaron. Uh, what would you say is your favorite moment from the show so far? Oh. <sighs> oh, that's so hard. I know. Um, I'm assuming we're going with what's been aired. So yeah, yeah. no, oh, yeah. to caveat like the what is your favorite moment from all the episodes that yeah. have been released all so right. far? I think <laughs> I, I get I'm to cheat. Sure. I only have one episode. <laughs> 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 yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be related to your character either. Like, yeah, I thought be, everyone else. Yeah. I was going to say. I bet everyone's going to say something other people did, but I was just going to be completely self indulgent, regardless. Yeah, um, do it. I think again to to just be totally self-indulged i really i really like the moment when valerie uh texted her her sister alice like mm -hmm. i need pickup sorry i'm late i was hanging out with friends and it was just like the note that instead of instead of saying the group or the club she said friends and yes. i honest, honestly teared mm -hmm. up a little listening to that yeah. again we actually just got a, another mm -hmm. comment on the youtube upload for that one the other day like commenting on that specific moment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have mine, and it may echo everyone after I say it, mm -hmm. but um, it's the horse. <laughs> That's true. The horse, That's of true. course. It's the horse. Of the yeah. horse, of yeah. Course. yeah. That was <laughs> sorry, incredible. Drag, but that <laughs> was that was just so unexpected. Yeah. When uh, we were like, "Why is it she transforming?" and then we found out why. <laughs> I was very adamant to myself designing these extra characters. One of them had to have a jokey power. <laughs> I hope you realize there's times where I'm like at work, brewing a cup of coffee, and in my back of my mind, I just have this thought of like, Aaron really made a horse girl. Like, yeah, Aaron really went there. Like, it truly lives in my mind rent free. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I have a, I have a special piece of lore I can reveal about Made Marvelous 2 <laughs> just for this ooh. thing. Um, oh boy. <laughs> uh, so, you know how the, the members of Sagittaria all have these, like, very alliterative names that conveniently all go together? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so Diana definitely set that up. They did not all have those matching idol names before she organized this whole endeavor. Um, so everybody had their own idol name beforehand, and I do have them all written oh, down. I wait, won't tell them. I, I think I know. I won't okay, tell them all now. now. Um, but actually, mm -hmm. yeah, give me your guesses of what Maid Marvelous's name was. Is it a nightmare? No, <laughs> no, but that's very <laughs> no. good. 
Damn it. I'm okay, going to guess Equestria. Ooh, no, Ooh, unfortunately, ooh, that's no. a good it's one. Much, it's much um, sillier than that. Okay. <laughs> Rats. Thought I had it. <laughs> I don't uh, know. All I have a tag. All the only tagline no, I have I'm- is that it's your little pony. Like it's her idle name, and then that's her <laughs> <laughs> tagline. <laughs> no, um, no. It's the, the 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 silliest possible thing I could imagine. Um, her her idle name was um pony pony pony, spelled the way that the group Tony 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 is spelled. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> like, hang on, let me, I need to look up Wait. the spelling again. No, I know exactly oh what you're talking about because to- sorry, I'm laughing really loud because Tony, Tony, Tony used to perform like in my neighborhood. <laughs> like every weekend, it was like Tony, Tony, Tony. It's like T O N Y, T O N I, T O N I E. Like it's something yeah, yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> It's, I just no. looked it up because I had I did not know it's Tony oh, with a Lord. Y, Tony with an I, and then Tony, but it's it's an E with an accent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> I hate it here. Oh, <laughs> Maybe it's for the it, best Tony. that the names got changed. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I don't think Jaden. I. Jaden's a nice guy, but I don't think he would be able to live with himself if he got kicked off stage by someone named Pony Pony Pony. <laughs> she just that really Aaron, I'm, Aaron, I'm losing it. I've been it waiting right now. to drop that on y'all for so long. <laughs> Aaron, I'm losing it. <laughs> she needs to find two more uh idols with, with pony related powers. Exactly. Oh my god. She can Honestly, you know what? Group. That's it's it's the free made marvelous movement from here on out. I want her out of Sagittaria. I want her in yes. a, I want her in a pony 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 group. Oh my lord. She is they need too to create good pony 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 the for trio. Sagittaria and it's time for her to break free. It's yeah. Break free. Yeah. You know, uh. reunionizing against <laughs> <laughs> Diana and Tyra. <laughs> I feel like that's eventually gonna. Happen. Yeah, probably. Yeah, should. probably. My my idol um. group, fourteen uh, F, fifteen F, fourteen F, thirteen M is unionizing. I also. Oh my gosh! Oh my god. Uh, I guess that's yeah. That's my favorite moment as well. <laughs> um, that's my favorite moment, and him snapping right afterwards. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, um, I thought that was a very interesting character development in general. But also, that moment was just ridiculous. <laughs> it was. Just getting kicked off stage by a horse. Yeah, it, it was mostly was serious was- up until then. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like what a tension breaker. I will not pass up an opportunity to to drop something like absolutely that level of silly on it. <laughs> it, was it was great. Really, it was, it was awesome. fantastic. It, yeah, it was wonderful. It was great. <laughs> so good. And there are more great moments like it coming in Oh god. <laughs> oh, it's even more chaotic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope the trend keeps going. That it's always Jaden. I, I just want that to be the thing. I just want the universe to just hate Jaden. <laughs> you just want it so that oh. never mind. <laughs> I want Jaden to go through Deku's manga arc, okay? I don't <laughs> <laughs> I want him to lose it. I want him to just go solo. Um absolutely crack under the pressure. Um <laughs> No, you can't you can't be solo. You're just gonna join Pony Pony Pony. <laughs> <laughs> um God, that's so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, does anybody have oh, any other okay. moments they'd like to share? Uh, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go. Downpour. Mm. Like, oh, oh yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it's not just because it was like an incredibly cool session, but uh, with the new players coming in and taking time to get to know each other and for the characters to get to know each other, that was the first time we th- things really kicked into high gear yeah yeah Yeah. like speaking of slice of life campaigns it had mostly been that up to that point (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and it really took a narrative turn at that point Mm -hmm. it was that moment at the end where we're like whoo whoo just 
That's that's masks, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was our ma- yeah. that's masks, baby moment for sure. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I love it really that. Was. I really wasn't sure how that session was going to go. It was either going to go really good or really bad, oh, and God. it went yeah, really yeah. bad. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. The, and it the was fear great for and it. uncertainty as we resolved as we resolved each of those roles and saw the uh, tried to figure out everything that was going to happen at once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mine is like very silly and definitely comes from what i think is like a pretty viewer related experience because um up until recent i mean not recently i haven't been a viewer for six months or just a listener for six months but um wow you you should catch up i know right i'm so (laughs) behind (laughs) but um i just remember like this is so silly but i just remember listening and when Luca had Queen Bee be like, oh, yeah, my bees, Veronica, Heather, and JD, I was like, oh! like I had that like, listener moment of like, I know that reference, <laughs> um, which is like very pleasing to me, especially because that's legitimately one of my favorite musicals. Um, my sorority sisters and I dressed up as the Heathers and Veronica for like Halloween. Like, yeah, love it. Love it very oh much. God. So, um, very silly, but you know, mm-hmm. the viewers have that, or the listeners have that moment of like, oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> That's always a good little tidbit. Plus it was also like, ended up being a narrative thing in reality. Uh, I have two answers to this question. One is the, maybe the obvious GM answer. Um, and that is the, the, the final pose at the end of the final <laughs> Uh, Stormlight performance. Yeah. So um, cute. Actually, that actually my two yeah. answers are probably very tied to each other because they're the two things that got really nice commissions made of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what so, a coincidence. Yeah. Um, so it's that <laughs> because it felt like a really like perfect culmination of that entire first arc just for all of you <laughs> and all of the players who played with us before um, who played for a very short time, but still mm-hmm. ca- er, still contributed um mm-hmm. but still um it, it just there was so much emotion in that whole session and it really like all capped off very very well with that moment i felt like um but my other favorite moment i was thinking about it like when it really gets down to it my my absolute like the the absolute height of delight that i have felt through this entire campaign was um queen bee like well alan having the the snap during the zero degrees fight, the mm, you want to heal, yes. I'll show you a heal moment. Yes, that's leading so into good. The, yeah. it, the Queen Bee it's transformation. A, it's such a character defining moment, I think. Yes. Like, I feel like that's when Queen Bee became the heal, was mm-hmm. that dance battle yeah. with zero degrees. I haven't planned for that at all. Such a good episode, though. <laughs> so incredibly yeah. good. Like, Hats off to to you, Luca, for for playing that way. Uh, hats off to Nathan for for driving you that way. Um, and hats mm-hmm. off to T for like also like playing really well in that session and like driving that whole situation to where it was. Like, oh it, my god, yeah. it, like, I don't know. The, it set the stage for the Mean Girl BFFs, Queen Bee, and mm-hmm, the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> incredible. Team Yellow and Black. I've, yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen two nice best friends doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're two mean best friends <laughs> yeah but yeah specifically from that from that scene i i really really love the tango dip so much and that's that's why it's i wanted so, to commission yeah. that as an art piece it's just such a beautiful god the minus mm-hmm. one <laughs> the minus one that's perfect like, <laughs> everything Fell together. So it was, good. <laughs> it was great. And also, Nathan was a joy to play with. And I have yes. very fun memories of that I session because I know oh, I was yes. super nervous. And Nathan was just very charismatic the whole time and just quickly broke the ice so mm-hmm. that we could we mm-hmm. could all really shine. I so. think Nathan might have the highest charisma in an individual <laughs> oh, I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Possibly yeah. the entire mm-hmm. TTRPG yeah. sphere. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If not the yeah. world, like I think that's so cool. I think that's accurate. Yeah, I think that's a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody, go buy Nathan's games and listen to Nathan's podcasts and streams. Please, yes, yes. please yes. do. 
Their games are so much fun. Yes. 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 And thank you. Thank you again, Nathan, for being on the show and for being so much fun to play with. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And and on that note, uh, thank you so much to to Joel for joining us for the extensions episode. Yes. Oh, Oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We are still quoting about Texan oil to this day. Yes. (gasps) Yeah. That was hilarious. I was on the floor listening to I lost it the moment he introduced himself and I just. Never recovered. I knew I... it was not going to be serious the moment you told us Joel was coming. I was like, oh boy, I don't know how I'm going to stay in character. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, in my like crunch session to like listen to all the unedited episodes, I did listen to Joel's episode like twice because it was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> so funny. It was yeah. so funny. <laughs> my God. Oh. <laughs> I think I think that was the point. That was the first point where Valerie just completely, completely dropped the mask of being calm and cool, yeah. or at least pretending to be. It was just like, how, how do you even, how, how? <laughs> yeah, how, how? That's that's a good question. How, yeah, how do I how? deal with you? How do I deal with you? Another runner-up moment is definitely Vivi saying, "This is the worst thing I've ever seen." <laughs> <laughs> And the art for that was terrifying as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, hats off. Like, while well, we're giving hats off, hats off to Lance for like drawing mm-hmm. all the lovely wow. like bust art so for all good. our guests and and voiceover characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's always so it's such a delight to receive anything from them. <sighs> yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of people working on the show in various capacities, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, a shout out to Onsta for all of our character designs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Onsta, Onsta, Onsta I owe you more than I can say for <laughs> <laughs> my artwork. I yes. have cried over it. Oh my god! <laughs> so good. I've been working with I've, Onsta same. for so long, like mm-hmm. both on like Maho profile and even before that. Like the very first thing she ever did for me was like I was making love live videos still, and I was like. There was a like a moment, like a particular card pull that was so momentous that I just needed to have it illustrated. And I, and I put a call out on Twitter saying, "Like, are there any artists following me who would like to illustrate this thing I'll, uh, that I can pay to do this?" Um, and uh, Onsta was one of the people who responded, and and it's been a beautiful friendship ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, they did incredible work on mm-hmm. our characters. Really mm-hmm. brought like mm-hmm. the feeling of them to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Go go follow her over at um, Monsta Monsta. Uh, like she's doing a lot of VTubing now. She has a very like yeah. really cute, spunky VTuber character. It's I think so Space Monsta. I think so it's just adorable. the character yeah. name. <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> well, I think I think we've done about as much as we can do at this point. Like short of reading yeah. every <laughs> single question, we've been recording for two and a half hours. I think we're. Mm-hmm. I think we're probably we it, yeah. good at this point. <laughs> yeah. We got it. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much t- again to everybody for all the for all the questions that you sent. That that was an, some amazing discussion. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Con- considering the circumstances listening. we're all recording under, yes, I think we did very listening. well. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 What a day! But I had a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it was great to just reminisce about absolutely. how far we've come so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah in in the show and everything we've done like sometimes i'm just like people will listen to this later if, as i'm recording <laughs> where i'm just like yeah. people actually listen to this and like our characters and like what we're doing and yeah. just yeah, it's wild. I, sometimes it's hard to wrap my head around that there are people looking forward to the work we do yeah during. it's really yeah. really wonderful yeah. whenever i i see see people talking about liking the show and liking our characters it's it's really yeah amazing yeah. and and for me like like there are people who like are trying to run their own super idols games at this point like whammy yeah. has asked a couple of questions yeah, and, that's, or, and that's whammy is running a super idols campaign over in the masks discord right now i think and wow <laughs> has kind of spread the good word of super idols over in the masks discord in general and like you're kind of working on a little spinoff, aren't you, Aaron? Or should we say that here? Yeah, or? no, we can we can say that because it is something I would mm. like to do at some point. It's just a ways off, so <laughs> don't get yeah. too excited for it yet. Um, <laughs> but I, I but, really, you know, just yeah. planting a seed, you know, to mm-hmm, save, mm-hmm. you know, just put a little aside for a system coming mm-hmm. in sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say at some point, maybe like arc three or arc four, maybe I would like to mm. actually like 
because our rules are so homebrewed at this point anyway, I would like to just like push it all the way into just being like a full on like super idols hack at that point. Mm, um, and yeah. yeah. I don't know how in depth it would go, like if it would be a full book or just like a little pamphlet with a few like playbook alterations. Uh, but at the very least, it would change like the stats and basic moves um, and it would make everything like more in line with like what this genre of like super powered idols is supposed to be mm-hmm. <laughs> as opposed to yeah. operating within a genre that isn't quite the right fit and no game really is quite the right fit for it. <laughs> That's yeah. true, but in a good way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. The, and yeah, we're we're breaking the mold. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. Yeah. honestly, I said before when I when I run a game, I don't, I never really have uh, an idea of what I want to do. I just like look at what the game does that I find what you know what game does something that I find interesting and where I can work with players to come up with something. I think it's it's really great how you had this really unique vision that that didn't match anything that already existed in the, the tabletop RPG space and made it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's me and my, uh, I'm on the autism spectrum and that's me trying mm-hmm. to fit all of my special interests into one big mega project. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. But you yeah, did it. Like you did it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so glad that I did, that it resonates with, with all y'all and with all mm-hmm. y'all who listen. And it, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's just, it's honestly the most creatively fulfilling thing I've ever worked on, to be to be completely honest. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 It just feels good to make. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you all so much for being here with me tonight on this lovely Friday night um, and answering all of, all of our lovely listener questions. It's been a great trip down memory lane, and I'm really looking forward to doing this again uh, when we're finished Arc 2, both like in the releases and when we actually finish playing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. stoked. Yeah. This was fun. Going down remember um, your name. Mm-hmm. This was this was really fun. Yeah. Um did we introduce ourselves? No. 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 <laughs> we just no. Jump into it. I just I tried. tried. Um, but yeah. I heard and Do we want to record ignored. a quick a quick um. hello <laughs> you're all our names? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, yeah. sure. <laughs> all right. And with me, as always, are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hi. And Liv. Hello. We definitely didn't record this at the end of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And awkward cut here.